Hey everybody, it's Eric here with Spartan Auto Works. Today we're going to go over the replacement of a PCM or ECM. Uh, they go by a lot of different uh, acronyms. Uh, but I just want to give you a quick overview of how straightforward it is of replacement of a PCM in a 99 to 07 Chevy truck or 2000 to 2006 GM SUV. All right, so here's the replacement PCM that we're going to be using. It's an 0411 PCM, which doesn't really mean a lot to a lot of people. Um, but to tuning people, the 0411 is a popular PCM because it's got more memory and uh, I believe a faster processor. Um, but that doesn't really matter. When you call us, what we need is your year, make, and model. If it's gas or diesel, also you need to let us know if it's hybrid. Um, to make sure we have the right PCM in stock. If we do, we can flash it to your calibration. Uh, we also use the latest GM uh, updated calibration when we flash out to you, so you are getting the freshest update. Um, when you get it, it's pretty much a simple plug play install. Uh, My security, which we're gonna touch on here in just a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna move the camera around. I'm gonna show you what has to be removed and get the install started. So on the driver's side, Next to the battery, you'll find the cover for the PCM right here. It's held in by two clips. The easiest way to get this off is just to grab it from the back. And you kind of got to push down and then pull up. And it will release the back clip and then it slides right out in the front. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. All right, now that the cover's off, you'll see you have two connectors. Uh, on this particular one, one's going to be blue, one's going to be red. If you have an O3 up, one's going to be blue, one's going to be green. I could be doing these backwards, but it doesn't really matter. Um, you'll have one extra little clip right here that's what holds it into the actual holder or PCM into the holder. You'll have two screws or two bolts that hold it into the PCM itself and you'll need a seven millimeter uh, socket. Uh, go ahead and take those off or take the bolts out and then you can slide the connectors off. All right, so we've got the uh, connectors unbolted from the P or PCM itself. One thing I'd like to point out is there's a rubber seal, orange rubber seal that's on the inside of these, uh, these connectors. Uh, here in a minute, I'll grab another one and show you what they look like. But most of the time when you go to pull them off, they're so compressed and sticky, they actually stick onto the PCM themselves. Uh, my suggestion to put them back, instead of, I've seen some people try to put them back on here and then throw the, the, plug, or the connector back over the PCM and try to get them to go that way. The easiest way to put these back uh, when you go put your new PCM in is actually set them back inside the connector itself and then use like a little flathead screwdriver or a pick and push it back around the actual plastic connector itself. And when you go to put the connector back on, it's fully seated. You'll go and put your bolt in. It's going to firmly seal against the connector for the PCM. So I'd like to point out on the PCM, both the replacement and the old one or the original they're marked for the plug so this is the blue side and this is the red side now when this goes in there it only fits one way inside the holder it's going to fit just like that and then the way the wiring harness is kind of formed basically those plugs are only going to be able to go in one way uh, i'm not saying it's not possible where you couldn't get them backwards but if you ever need to confirm it it's marked on the actual pcm itself and I'll go ahead and show you here in a second on the connector itself. They have blue and red or blue and green caps that cover the actual connector. It's not a very good view, but you can see on the connectors, there's blue caps on that one and red caps on the other one that protect the pins or guide the pins. And that is the easiest way to know which side is which when you match it up to the PCM. All right, so now that we have the PCM back in its slot, I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes so I'm not putting it all back together but you'll bolt up the connectors again uh, when you put them down or when you bolt them down they don't have to go super super tight uh, just get them hand tight maybe just a little bit more uh, they're kind of brittle especially since they're old so you don't want to crack the housings of the uh, connector itself uh, I imagine it probably take pretty good force to do it but better safe than sorry so after you get that done you can put your cover back on which is this guy right here it can be a little tricky to get back on then you can hook up your negative battery ground back up, and then we'll have to go and do the security relearn procedure. All right, so for this next procedure, we're gonna be doing a 30 minute security relearn of the key. Uh, what that means is the key is gonna be in the run position uh, for three ignition cycles. 
for 30 minutes, or 10 minutes a piece. So three for 10 minutes usually equals 30 minutes. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is put a battery maintainer or a jump box like we have. Uh, we have a pretty heavy duty jump box. You want constant battery voltage. Also, you want to turn off your headlights or anything that may be drawing power. Uh, a lot of times these key relearns will fail uh, when you don't have the right voltage going to the battery. Uh, I've been called out to a couple occasions where people have replaced PCMs or actually one particular customer. He's replaced two PCMs. Um, not that I programmed, but somebody else's program went to put them in and they would fail the key relearn. He thought it was programming. Both times I went out there and I did a, a, it's a kind of a bypass to the 10 minute key relearn. And I guess they had run the battery down so much that it didn't want to take the key relearn. So when you go to do your key relearn, make sure you have good battery power or at least a fully charged battery. Uh, I've done this on a fully charged battery without a jump pack, but make sure you have a fully charged battery or make sure you're putting power uh, to the system so that way you have a strong uh, system voltage. All right, not sure if you can see it there very well, but now we put the new PCM in, you'll see that it's flashing obviously battery and it's also flashing security. So what we're about to do is enter into the 30 minute security relearn. Before we get started, I wanna give an example of what happens after we replace the PCM that doesn't have the security learn to it. It will crank and start and only run for a couple seconds and die. All right, so you replace your PCM, you buttoned up everything underneath the hood, you put your battery charger uh, on your battery, uh, so everything is good to go. Now you need to start your 10 minute relearn. So you're going to put the key in the ignition, you're gonna turn it to run. You're gonna try to start the engine, the engine's gonna fail. When the engine fails, to crank, or it's gonna crank, but it's gonna fail to start, uh, leave the key in the run position, but do not but take it out of the start position so it's just in the run position. You're going to let it sit there for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, you'll notice that they're over in the message center that the security light will stop flashing and it'll be off. So after that's off, you'll take your key, you'll turn it off. Within 5 seconds, you'll turn it back to run. You'll wait another 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, the security light will be off in the message center. After that 10 minutes, you turn the key back off, you turn it back to run. You'll wait another 10 minutes. This will be the end of your 30 minute relearn. So after the end of this third third turn, the security light will be off. Once the security light goes off, this is where the security relearns to the PCM. You'll cycle the key back off and within five seconds. You'll turn the key, try to start it, and it'll crank right up. That's all there is to the PCM replacement. Now, if your PCM has not been programmed, uh, you'll need to either Put the PCM and have it taken to a dealer or somebody that can actually flash it with the SPS service from General Motors. Uh, or you'll have to send it out to somebody who can flash it. Uh, any PCM that anybody buys from us will be pre-flashed uh, pre uh, with your VIN. Obviously, we'll get your VIN number. It'll be pre-flashed, ready to put in. The only thing that will be required is this 30-minute relearn. Uh, if you have access to a, uh, the SPS, you could obviously go in there and do a 10-minute relearn. Uh, but if you had access to the SPS, you probably wouldn't order a pre-programmed PCM. Uh, but that's all there is to it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to call or email us. Have a great day.